Well, welcome back out live to the blue. It is homecoming, and who better to talk about what's going on within the Boise State football program right now than somebody that was in the fire at this time last year. Dante Harrington, former Boise State offensive lineman, joins the show at Boise State, that is. And um, Dante, first things first, how surprised were you with all the news that happened this last week? Yeah, I mean, obviously it was a huge surprise. I mean, but you had to realize that something was going to change. I mean, Boise State, something, everything, it wasn't working. We had to make a change. It was a huge tradition here, and I think Coach Avalos knew what had to happen. Yeah, you look at the offense, and you said that you could feel a change. You played in this offense last year. What do you feel like the disconnect might have been that just kind of held you guys back at times? You know, I mean, one of the bigger differences between the offenses that we ran when I first got here in 2016 and the offense now is we were able to kind of spread a lot of the responsibility of, of, of making the calls and having to communicate with the quarterback, offensive line, running back, and protections and in the run game. And I think that a lot of that onus was put on the quarterback and having to do that in the line of scrimmage. And when you want to push tempo the way that Coach Plow is trying to push, it's that's a lot to ask. So we've heard so far this week that's something that they're looking to simplify. So much was on Hank as the starting quarterback. How, how do they simplify? And as a former offensive lineman, what might fall on Will Ferris' shoulders as the starting center tonight? Yeah, Will's, Will's very capable shoulders, I must say. I mean, that's a guy that I competed with just last year. Him and Kay Connie, whoever's up there, it's good to go. But, um, you know, I just have to say, you know, you take a lot of pride as a center in being able to own the protection, set the front, and be able to communicate with the offensive line and running backs. And, uh, that's, I think, where they can make a big change. It's just, hey, let's spread this, spread the responsibility a little bit out. You know, it doesn't have to all be on the quarterback's shoulders. He's got things he's looking at, and there's things that the center and offensive line can see too. You know, we were sitting here at this point in time last year, and you guys got off to a little bit of a slow start, faced a lot of adversity. Then all of a sudden, down the stretch, you won four out of five games. Very easily could have won all five of them. What was the key to turning that around last season? And is there any chance this team can learn from that experience and mimic the results? Well, I think that one thing is for sure, and that's there's the, the ability is there. I mean, you look at the team, you look at the roster, there's a lot of talent all up and down the roster, including guys that are starters to backups. And I think that's what you have to lean on. You have to lean on the guys. I mean, one thing that we had to do was simplify things make things a, a, a little bit more easy to digest so you can move a little bit quicker um, and, and really make sure that you're communicating and just trust and play for each other. I mean, that's what it really came down to is controlling what you can control, and I think that's what the big focus was there. I know that this is a program that loves to limit distractions. <laughs> this has got to be hard. This is going to test the players, right? I mean, it's, uh, it's easy to buy into that, but there's one thing is that you have to be able to, when you're in times of turmoil like this, it's just going back to the stuff that you have control over, like I was saying before. And it can be a distraction, but it's all dependent on, on where your focus is. And I think that these guys have, have been through moments of turmoil before, and we've been able to come out on top. These guys know what, what to expect. I mean, there's been a lot of leadership over the years. That's a big onus on the program, is passing down what's learned from those senior players to the guys coming up. And I think that's what you'll see here tonight. You know, full disclosure, Dante works out at the same gym I do. Uh, he's been hitting it a little harder, obviously, than I have. But we, we every now and then we get to have these fun conversations. Taylor Green's name has popped up before. Yeah. How confident are you that he can run the show? Taylor, Taylor's a guy that I got full confidence in. I mean, all you had to do was turn on the Oregon State game, and you saw the athleticism that was on display. And you know. One thing that for him is just making sure that he's having the confidence to go out there and just run the show. It goes through him. And what, if he's able to communicate with speed and certainty and, and all those things that, that come with being a, a quarterback and in this offense, that's that's where you know you can really rely on that. I yeah. mean, Taylor Green, he's, he's a great dude, and you got to love the community as well. Dante, you're a, you're a class act, man. I appreciate <laughs> you joining us on the Bronco Round of Game Day Show. Not going to be the last time, okay? All right. I'm going to hey, hold you to that. All right. I mean, I'm here for it. You call and I'm here. All right, perfect. Go enjoy homecoming, okay? Right, Your you. first as an alumnus of this yeah. university. Appreciate you, Dante. Now we're going to toss it out to Justin, who's with the fans in the parking lot.